A first ever driverless shuttle has made its first appearance in New York's Times Square. The boxy electric bus bounced along a 150-yard section of Broadway near 48th Street. It's fitted with special high-tech sensors, but it has no driver at the wheel. We're demonstrating the uh, Coast Autonomous uh, Self-Driving Low-Speed Vehicle. It's a shuttle that's designed to go in airports or in business parks or in college campuses or in downtown urban centers theme parks, anywhere that a, a, a 20 mile an hour or less vehicle work for both pedestrians and for uh, uh, goods. The electric bus with low speed space will enable individuals get in quickly and be able to get operational quickly as well. A lot of people do not want to be driving their car, finding a parking space and, and then you know, getting out, getting, walking around the city. They'd like to be able to just come and go. And that's really where I think young people, really the whole country is going right now, is the opportunity to be in a driverless vehicle. The vehicle can fit up to 20 people with its seats taken out. While Coast Autonomous is just a year old, it's been working on its self-driving technology for 15 years and expects to deploy its first fleets by next year. This vehicle has been built to be autonomous. It means that every single feature has sensor to control it, at least double sensors for uh, redundancy and safety. Their aim is to get some city centre partly rid of cars, where people can live like people in the city and not cars in the city. printing is making a big difference in the medical field and a Brazilian has become a pioneer in harnessing the technology. Bioarchitect, founded four years ago by young entrepreneur Philippe Marquez, uses 3D printing to create artificial body parts and limbs. With computer modeling based on computerized axial tomography scan imagery, Bioarchitect prints exact 3D models of patients' organs. The fourth industrial revolution has arisen from the combination of many different technologies, and I believe 3D printing is one of them. It will change everything from how we perform surgery, which is our case here, to any other product we purchase. Using the model, doctors can actually see where they will need to operate during surgery and decide on what procedures, including choosing the exact location for an incision or the best way to access the organ, before the actual operation begins. These models can also be used for educational purposes. Students can use the 3D models to practice operations and there is a software which can show if the students do the operations correctly with the right quantities in the right places. 3D printing has a huge potential to develop the market of customized products of all kinds. So I'm sure that as the technology develops and 3D printing becomes cheaper and quicker, this will become a mass market. The company also makes implants. Their 3D printed titanium cranial or cranial facial plates implant has gained approval for use by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. For now, these custom-made models and implants are still costly and not covered by health insurance providers in most countries. However, Marquez was optimistic about the future of the market for 3D printed artificial body parts.